G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. All right, have a look at the market. So down, down we go. <laughs> and look, this has been a, a little bit lower. It did dip down to 53,000. I think it might even have wicked down to 52,000. So we can see there's a bit of a sell-off here. But I have an interesting story that shows institutions are buying the dip. So again, I think this is a lot of retail money. I spoke about this yesterday. I think this is mainly a shakeout. And look, just a healthy correction in general as well. The markets went up so much. You know, six monthly green candles in a row. That hasn't been done since back in 2013. So we're probably due for a red candle month or two. And, that, and that's just the truth of it. Now, I'm not trying to throw FUD out there and scare everybody. But that is something that we need to consider. And when we have a look at the charts, we'll have a look at a couple of things that show just how far off the kind of the medium that we are. And I mean, we're not like super far off, but we're a little ways from it. And again, we'll move on to that. But what we can see, look, a lot of red. This doesn't look good at all. And we still have the weekend to come. So it is looking like we might be in a downward trend. And look, this may well last a couple of months and in all fairness, if it does last a couple of months, that's going to be a good thing because it means we haven't hit the top yet. Again, because it's not big major sell-offs. We didn't have a parabola going up and we haven't had a parabola, parabola dump either. So it's literally just a healthy market correction at the moment. For me, I'm not worrying. I'm just going to keep dollar cost averaging. Like I said, if I see Bitcoin get down into you know, like the 40s and particularly kind of the low 40s, under 45,000, I mean, I'll be jumping on it. I never throw in all my money because if it goes lower, then I've got nothing. So for me, if I see Bitcoin around sort of 46, $47,000, I'll probably put about half of all my cash that I'd want to put into Bitcoin into it. And then if it goes down lower, I put half of what's left over into it and half of what's left over again and half of what's left over again. That way I can constantly scale into it because this isn't the top, you know, again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion. It's not playing like a top. It's just simply playing out like a correction. And, and that's good. There's been so many gains out there, you know, in Bitcoin alone. I mean, it was $3,800 about a year ago and now it's fifty four thousand dollars i mean that's basically a 20x so yeah you can't complain with that all right let's move on 1.7 trillion so we've dropped down from that 1.8 trillion again and i wouldn't be surprised if we come back down and sort of test the 1.5 1.6 trillion dollar level over the next couple of weeks now that's if it plays out how i think it might and I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen because there's news saying that institutions are buying the dip. So that really makes me think this is a bit of retail that are just panicking. You know, the strong hands hold and the weak hands fold. That's just the way it goes. And that's unfortunate. So new money has come in and they're going to feel like maybe they came in late and they just can't handle the volatility. And so they get shaken out. I will just continue to dollar cost average into the projects I like. So again, there's DeFi projects that I'm happy to buy up. Uh, you know, Secret Network, Love Secret Network, The Graph, uh, Filecoin. There's, you know, a ton of coins out there. You know, Ethereum, I mean, if Ethereum gets down to $1,300, you know, $1,200, I will be throwing the kitchen sink at it. You know, Polkadot, I'll be buying more Polkadot. There's so many projects there, you know, Uniswap. Theta Network, I've got a story about Theta Network. I won't be buying any Theta Network just yet. It's been on too much of a pump. I really need to see a big retracement. But I am kicking myself that I didn't get onto Theta Network because I did know about it quite some time ago and I just kind of held off uh, and I am disappointed in myself. Chainlink, it's fallen outside of the top 10. You know, everyone was so bullish on it that it, you know, it was going to be sort of top two, top three and I think it made it into the top five just... And there we go, the hype has fallen off. Now this is not saying that Chainlink is dead or anything whatsoever. It just got to a point where it couldn't keep sustaining that kind of growth. Chainlink, in my opinion, not financial advice, is a great project. And look, if it keeps you know, on a downward trend, again, so many projects out there, particularly Uniswap, I was in it and got out. Yeah, there's a whole lot of altcoins that I'm absolutely looking to uh, get into on this dip. And again, Bitcoin, I have uh, 
you know, I have a reasonable amount of cash sitting on the side, and I'm not talking about the dollar cost averaging part. I sold, like I said, 10% of my crypto back when Bitcoin was around $50,000. I will be looking to, you know, again, substantially get back into Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, if this goes down into the 40s and this gets down around kind of 1300 maybe even sort of $1,200 level. Uh, absolutely will be jumping all up over those. All right, BTC dominance, so 58.3%, ETH 11.1%, so that's uh, dropped, and gas prices, still 116. So not great, but they've obviously been a lot worse than that. All right, looks pretty red here at the moment. We can see like Theta Network had a good move, but you know, what's been the biggest mover? Maybe it was Theta Network. What has really pumped in the last 24 hours? Because it looks like mainly sell off there. No, Anchor, there we go, 43, 41.3%. Theta Network nearly 30%, but up 100% in seven days. So I will be really looking for this to have a major, excuse, well, not a major correction, but at least a correction anyway. Waves, Ontology, Curve Dow. So there's some coins that have done it right here. Harmony still going, Bitmax token still going, uh, o, OX. Icon, there we go, even Filecoin, so Filecoin's still moving. So there's definitely been some coins that have done well. And as I've said multiple times, anything over 15% for me, that is a pretty good gain over 24 hours. So Bitmax, there's a few that have done the rest. And look, no one's you know upset with a 10%, 9% gain over 24 hours. But all right, so we've seen what's moved in the last 24 hours in the top 100. What has... Uh, not done well in the last 24 hours. All right, are we, but they're still up a fair bit. And look, Dent, again, none of these dips are too bad. They're all, again, the the 15%, that's uh, how I think about cryptocurrencies in a bull market. If it goes up more than 15% in the 24 hours, it's doing pretty well. If it goes down by more than 15% in the last 24 hours, it's generally doing pretty bad. But, you know, if your 15%, you know, loss... Uh, was preceded by you know 50 to 100 percent gain then you know who cares no one's too worried about it but no real big losses here whatsoever and a couple of really good gains and again here comes voyager token coming way down i will have to look at voyager token that's something i wanted to get into same with polygon i may buy some more matic i'll have to look into that there's a number of projects here that uh i'll be looking to buy the dip let's say that all right, let's move on to the Bitcoin chart. So this is the monthly, and this was what I wanted to show, sorry, the weekly, and this is what I wanted to show of how far we, off from the, we are off from the medium. So this is the 21 exponential moving average. Now, typically in bull runs, Bitcoin will come down and bounce off this a number of times. Now we can see this, this is way back when we had the big Corona crash. And then I guess, you know, some people would say the bull run started, but some people are going to kind of say that it started back here. And really, start. I would agree, this is probably where it technically started, because if we hadn't have had this corona dump, maybe this would have stayed above. But anyway, we can look at this. Um, yeah, here's, I guess, where we're going to have to start, because that really nullified it. But technically, I guess you could say this is where the bull run started. Bounced off once bounced off twice, bounced off three times. And then look what's happened. We haven't touched this line since September last year. And if we were to come back and touch this line, which is generally what it's done, it means Bitcoin could, I'm only gonna say could, could come back to $38,274. Now that would be an absolute steal. And I can tell you right now, if it somehow manages to get back to that price, I would literally sell everything basically I had to get into Bitcoin at that price. Now, could it go lower? Absolutely. It is quite possible that Bitcoin could come back down and retest these kind of levels, $13,000. It's possible. Maybe, and this is all hypothetical, maybe that was the kind of peak, you know, the 62000 Possible. I think it's unlikely. And if that was the peak, it would not surprise me if we came all the way sort of down to somewhere around about here back down to $10,000 as the low for the next cycle. 
but it would be too hard to know. No one can pick that exactly. So for me, I'm just simply happy to buy at that $38,000 level if it somehow gets there. And if it does come back down to, you know, again, around about $12,000, will that hurt? Absolutely. But the cycle will repeat itself again and I know I will just simply have to hold. And in four years time, we're probably gonna be double, triple this. So that's why I'm more an investor than a trader. Trading's too hard, it's really hard to know when the cycles have peaked. It's generally pretty easy to know when the cycles have started, but when they've peaked or when they're at the absolute bottom, too hard. So for me, I think we've got a lot more to go and I wouldn't be too worried if Bitcoin came down to 38,000. Like I said, I'd literally be doing everything I could to buy as much as I possibly could. And if I was wrong, and again, it comes back down and tests here, then I'm not too worried. I'm simply going to hold. I really don't think it's gonna come back down to these levels. I'm just saying hypothetically, if that was the case, based on history, I know I'd just have to wait four years, and in four years time, I would be well above, you know, where we previously were, and definitely well, well above where I then bought uh, the Bitcoin for 38,000. I mean, again, I've already told this, I bought Bitcoin back in sort of around here, this is where I got into it. So if it was to come back and sort of test this, you know, $12,000, $13,000 level, I would still be in profit anyway. So yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. That's how far we off are off the sort of, you know, the average sort of, or the fair price range in a bull run. That's why it keeps coming back and testing this in previous bull runs. Whether it'll do in this, do it in this one, I don't know. I really think we might get down to sort of here about the 46,000-ish dollar range. Uh, and again, that's really where I'll be looking to buy in, 47, 46,000 if it gets there. And again, that's where I put in half my cash. And then I, if I see it come down to around about sort of, you know, 40-ish, uh, 39,000, again, I put in half my cash. And then in, when if I see it come down to sort of, you know, well, I guess 38,000 is roughly where it's at. So really at the 40,000, I'd be looking to throw everything I had at it. That's just me. Again, you've got to work out your own plan, make your own decisions. I never offer financial advice. I could be completely wrong about it. And I also could be completely wrong in that this dip is not going to come down past maybe sort of where we are now or 50,000 and we just rock it up again. So that is the decisions that we need to make and you need to make your own. I can't tell you exactly what's going to happen. I can only tell you what I personally would do. If you choose to follow that, that's on you. You've made your own decisions. And look, maybe it'll be a great decision, but maybe it could be a really bad decision. That's why you should never just blindly follow anyone. Don't blindly follow me. Don't blindly follow even people who are licensed financial planners still give really bad advice sometimes. It needs to be a combination of a multitude of things. What you believe and what you think is going to happen, some professional advice, uh, just people who've been in that space for a really long time, you know, read, you know, vlogs and, oh, sorry, watch vlogs, read blogs, all that sort of stuff. It's got to be a combination of all those things for you to make a really good decision. Because just simply, yeah, again, blindly following any one person, including accredited uh, people, uh, is just silly because there's been plenty of credited uh, investors and uh, financial planners who have not uh, done the right thing by, not so much not done the right thing, but who've lost their clients' money. So buyer beware. All right, here we go. Back to the daily. All right, we are full sitting on this line, as we can see. It is, you know, it's dropped below, but it's just trying to hang on at the moment. So it still may jump back up into here, and then we break out to the upside. That is possible. But I just think it's looking less likely. I mean, look at that volume at the moment. There's not a lot of volume, but... Again, we've got some stories that sort of says, re uh, sorry, institutions, it seems like they are buying the dip. All right, so there we go. Again, is this really where we're going to come down to? Somewhere around about sort of here, 46,000. Again, I'll be buying that if we do. I'll be jumping all over it. But is it possible we come down to around about sort of here, which is where the 21 uh, exponential moving average is on the weekly? That would be interesting if we did. And like I said, I'd be selling just about everything to buy Bitcoin if it does get down to that price. All right, moving on to some interesting articles that I found. Okay, so here we are. Two signs we're not at the top of the Bitcoin cycle. Despite reaching a new yearly high recently, the Bitcoin velocity metric is 
are still far from the previous bull runs. It means that investors are mainly regarding BTC as a store of value instead of a medium of exchange and hinted that the ongoing bullish cycle is far from its top. <coughs> oh, excuse me. All right. Coin metrics data shows that the last time the reserve risk was at such levels as now, Bitcoin's value increased by roughly 4x in the following few months. So I do think we can come down lower. We have to have a bit of a correction phase, but then I do think that's exactly what's going to happen. Well, whether we go 4x up or not from here, I don't know. But I do think there's more upside. If this is to transpire again, Bitcoin will jump well above 200,000. Now see, the problem is at the moment, everyone knows about this, well not everyone, but a lot of people are clued into this kind of stuff. Stock to flows, price predictions, you know, and the bank, Citibank and that coming up with, you know, three hundred and four hundred thousand dollars Bitcoin and that. They've got an agenda when they say that. They've bought it for a whole lot cheaper and they want people to jump in thinking it's going to go to that price. And if they think it's going to go to that price... They're not selling at that price. If Citibank says they think it's going to 400,000, they're selling some at around 200,000 because they probably bought it at, you know, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, whatever. That well, actually they're selling some at 100, 150, 200, and they are going to really they're going to have sold off a majority of it long before it gets to that price. I can tell you right now, that's just simply what they do. That's why it's good to dollar cost average in. And then it's good to dollar cost average out. And you can be dollar cost averaging out as you're dollar cost averaging in as well. I know it doesn't make a whole lot of sense and I may have to do a video uh, and explain that at some stage in the future. But you absolutely can still be dollar cost averaging into something while dollar cost averaging out of it as well. Although it's, it's generally not the greatest idea. You probably should be dollar, costing average, dollar cost averaging into something else. But it can work. All right, moving on. XRP. So the price of XRP has surged by 10% following what seems to be positive developments in the case between Ripple and the US Securities and Exchange Commission. In a historic SEC lawsuit against Ripple Labs, a judge involved in the discovery process acknowledged, acknowledged XRP's uh, viability as both a currency and utility. In the same hearing, the SEC admitted that only Ripple and its affiliates are capable of illegally soliciting securities. Judge Sarah Newman of the Southern District Court of the United States characterised XRP exactly how Ripple lawyers characterise it as both a currency and a utility. So it's obviously got a bit of a pump, 10%'s good, but yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. This wouldn't be the first time things have appeared like it's going to go well and then all of a sudden it doesn't. And you know, for everyone in the XRP space, I really hope that you know it does work out because if it doesn't, well, that's really going to hurt. Now, NFTs, are they a bubble? And is, and is this a warning sign? All right, so Beeple immediately converted his $53 million NFT earnings from Ethereum to USD. The artist who sold an NFT artwork for $69 million says NFTs are absolutely a bubble. So he has quickly turned his, I mean, even in, you know, he got paid in Ethereum. I would have thought that, you know, the price of Ethereum at the moment still would have left like i don't know a fair bit in ethereum but i guess he thinks ethereum's gonna uh, pop and go a lot lower than what it currently is now so there you go very very interesting i mean 53 million dollars i wonder if he uh you know put it into usd and then put it on BlockFi or something like that i'm sure he probably has done that with uh, a substantial amount and look 53 million dollars you'll probably never have to work again so congratulations to him on getting that much but concerning that he has turned it straight into USD and that he says he thinks NFTs are a bubble. And I mean, look, even I think they're a bubble at the moment, but I think the good projects, uh, you know, they won't be hurt too much by, you know, the inevitable next bear cycle of cryptocurrencies because they will simply stay, you know, at the dollar value. But I guess that's why he has changed it from uh, the $50 or $69 million worth of Ethereum uh, and turned it into USDC. All right, Theta token, this is what hurts. So Theta token has risen 17,000% in a year and it cracks into the top 10 coins. I, I wish I had gone into this. I heard about it and I thought about it and I was like, umming and ahhing about, yes, I'm going to, no, I'm not going to. And I missed out on 17,000%. 
I mean, look, that's just the way it is. There's nothing you can do about it. I've had coins that have performed better. And again, I wish I only had have put more into them. But I really do like what Theta is all about. So that is a tale of you just can't win them all. It's, you know, it's too hard. You've got to do the research and jump into the ones that you think you're going to do well and then not kick yourself too much you know, when you miss coins that do this well. And trust me, there's coins that have done a whole lot better. But congratulations to everyone uh, who invested into Theta. And particularly if you're in it a year ago, you have done extremely well. Now, as I said, it seems like institutional money is buying the dip at the moment. And it's just the weak new money that are getting shaken out. So institutional managers hold a record $57 billion worth of crypto, according to CoinShares. Inflows into grayscale products continue to surge, according to CoinShares data. Bitcoin remains the preferred asset for institutional investors. Inflows into cryptocurrency investments topped $57 billion last week. Not months ago, not weeks ago, last week. We're talking only a few days ago. Marking a new all-time high and underscoring the rapid adoption of digital assets underway among institutions. Institutions are not the ones really selling at the moment. I'm not saying none would. I mean, you know, MicroStrategy could be selling a few Bitcoin, you know, to keep themselves cash positive when they need it. So could Tesla, but they're not dumping it on mass. It is being bought up in mass and the dips are getting bought up. And this is one of the reasons why I think maybe Bitcoin won't retrace as far as what it could and has previously, because when there's good dips at the moment, that is when institutions are jumping in. They're not buying when they feel like it's at a peak, but they are absolutely buying the dips. In its weekly inflows report, digital asset manager CoinShares said net inflows into digital asset investments uh, products rose by 99 million for the week ending in March 19th. Grayscale generated 9.1 million of inflows, bringing its year-to-date total to 2.373 billion. Flows into CoinShares uh, declined by 25.9 million from the previous week. Year-to-date flows have declined by 93 million. So again, people are buying the dip. They just uh, well, institutions are buying the dip. They're not buying the peaks. That's the um, you know, sort of new money get sh- getting shaken out, unfortunately. But institutions, when Bitcoin dips down, they are jumping all over it. And again, they were talking about the grayscale uh, Bitcoin trust selling at a loss like you're buying it at a discount. And I guarantee that her will have likely quickly changed and all of a sudden it'll be back uh, at a premium. All right, mainstream adoption continues to happen and it's now happening in a public forum. So cryptocurrency exchange FTX is on the brink of securing naming rights to the Miami Heat Stadium until 2040. So FTX has reached an agreement with Miami-Dade County on a 19-year partnership worth $135 million to name Miami Heat's home stadium the FTX Arena. So again, now these big crypto platforms and that, you know, they, they're getting out there in the public. They're going to be known to more and more people. Anyone who goes to watch a Miami Heat game are going to know who FTX is and that just will start to plant the seed in people's head that, Oh, this cryptocurrency stuff must be legit now. Like the, you know, the exchanges are, you know, naming arenas and banks are holding it, and this is how it all happens. And it is still a bit of a trickle effect at the moment. It's not like it's just gone boom, uh, and I don't think it's just simply going to go boom like that. I still think we might be another cycle away from, you know, it really getting out there, there, there to the public. Whoever's getting in now is going to. Again, be considered an early adopter and anyone who was in before was a really early adopter. But I think we might have another cycle or two. So maybe another five to sort of 10 years before, you know, cryptocurrencies and the digital dollar and that are basically just everywhere. All right. So the cryptocurrency derivatives exchange backed by Alameda Research is set to become the first member of the crypto industry industry to secure NBA naming rights pending approval from the Miami-Dade County Board of uh, County Commissioners uh, on March 26. The deal make, marks a significant mainstream partnership for a crypto-based platform which will see FTX tied to the Miami Heat until 2040. And so this is the kind of publicity that all cryptocurrency needs, you know, 
the a rising tide lifts all boats as they say so great for ftx but great for cryptocurrencies in general we need you know gemini and coinbase and all sorts of you know big crypto firms and that to start doing the same kind of thing we need that brand recognition out there and that will really drive that mass adoption stable coins all right so in the hot seat powell calls bitcoin a substitute for gold while fed says digital dollar prototype is coming in july so three major moments over the last couple of days help provide insight into the future of U.S. government's relationship with Bitcoin, stablecoins and digital currencies. The first was Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell's comments on digital assets and a central bank digital currency saying work on a U.S. digital dollar was not being motivated by Bitcoin or any other crypto and that Bitcoin is just a substitute for gold. So just a substitute, uh, interesting way to put it, but at least he's admitting that's what it is. It is a substitute for gold and possibly a better uh, substitute than gold because it's you know much more divisible, easy to carry around. Uh, you know, you can go places and pay for uh, things with Bitcoin. Not as many as we'd like, that will come, but you're never really gonna be able to walk into somewhere and pay with a piece of gold. Like those days are just long gone. Uh, it's a nice, pretty shiny you know rock or piece of metal you know that's very you know prehistoric oh look at this shiny thing it must be worth something <laughs> you know we're moving on from that i'm not saying gold has no place but it's just it's going to lose that store of value uh, and peter schiff you know he can bag it all he wants we all know that he's buying it he's just simply trying to keep the gold uh, industry as afloat as he can until he can transition out of it uh, and that's a straight fact and that's why his son is not involved in gold and his son is involved in Bitcoin and you know Peter Schiff he's doing the same anyway we'll move on from Mr Schiff the second was news that the Boston Fed uh, that it would be showing off two digital dollar prototypes in conjunction with MIT by July and the third was new was new draft financial action task force guidance around cryptocurrencies and this is concerning though that coindesk warns are significantly more er erroneous than previous guidance so further regulation and all the rest of it is coming we kind of knew that was going to happen anyway all right last but not least so v version 3 of uniswap is coming out and they've done something to make sure that people can't just simply copy their code and put out a copycat so very smart of them i love it i like that where their heads at uniswap has licensed the third iteration of its code bank in an apparent move to ward off would-be copycats similar to sushi so the white paper for v3 of the decentralized exchange was released on tuesday in a possible nod to rival project sushi swap which copied uh the the code um uh, and it sorry uh I've lost my train of thought here. So, in a possible nod to rival project Sushi Swap, which copied uh, Hayden Adams' creation uh, bit by bit, the Brooklyn NY-based uh, team's blog post included one section detailing a business source license that acts as a time delay for commercial use of the code for up to two years. So, that's the thing is you need to kind of have a copyrighted almost. So. You can't copyright code though forever, I don't think. And so what they've done is put a license in it that no one can copy it for two years. So smart thinking. After that point though, the code will remain in an open source GPL license uh, into per perpetuity for any project to build on or take uh, the form of. So very smart from Uniswap. You know, it was too easy for you know their co their code to just simply be copied and then all of a sudden sushi came out and sushi's taken a lot of, lot of money from uniswap and it's basically yeah just cut and paste and completely copied it and that's really unfair for uniswap but don't get me wrong uniswap's doing well and that is what's making me think i'm going to have to buy some uniswap tokens i'm really hoping that there's uh, you know a good correction for some of those altcoins because i think bitcoin will get on a run uh, and I'll be buying into them. But that's my thought. I'd love to know down below, are you buying this dip or do you think we're going a whole lot lower and you're simply waiting for the bottom? For me, I'm just dollar cost averaging, uh, you know, all the way sort of to the top really. Well, not to the top, but pretty close to the top. And when I feel like it's getting really kind of parabolic, then the dollar cost averaging stops 
the dollar cost averaging in anyway and then it's all just dollar cost averaging out to you know the point where i'm happy but yeah love to know your thoughts are you buying this dip or do you think it's you know going much lower and you're just simply waiting for the bottom yeah again love to know your thoughts all right stay safe be kind to one another it's hard to be on that gain train at the moment things are going down a little bit but there are you know individual projects that are doing all right and i hope you're in them in them and have done well and i'll see you next time